iron or indeed calcium into the oceans to increase the uptake of carbon uh, or spraying sulfate aerosols into the upper atmosphere. We know, by the way, that putting sulfate into the upper atmosphere does work because Mount Pinatubo did it for us. We ran the experiments and we actually got two years of global cooling out of it. The other ways are by mechanical engineering, air capture, artificial trees that will take carbon out of the atmosphere. Very much like carbon capture and storage, you then can put that carbon into spent oil and gas wells or aquifers. Uh, if you can imagine a situation where you were doing this perhaps in Saudi Arabia, uh, where you've got lots of spent oil and gas wells and using solar energy, uh, this might actually be quite a viable option. Uh, and another one which, for the sake of completion, really, rather than because I believe it to be of practical relevance, is the idea of putting uh, reflectors in the Lagrange point uh, between the Earth and the Sun uh, to reflect the sunlight back uh, in space. Now, I'm not advocating for any of these in particular, but I do want to, to say that I think that the... Uh, uh, to draw a contrast between two of these options. If you were convinced that there was a planetary emergency and you needed to cool the atmosphere, if you were convinced of that, you might well do stratospheric sulfate aerosols because A, we know it works, B, it's relatively cheap, C, the technology to do it is very close at hand. The trouble is of all of these options, that's actually probably going to be the most controversial in public policy terms. We spent decades telling people it's not a good idea to put sulfur in the atmosphere, and then we said we're going to do it on purpose. Uh, and there are also implications for disruption of monsoonal patterns, which would bring about equity issues between countries. Uh, there is a, an obligation under international law uh, not to cause harm to other countries, etc., etc. This would require a global agreement to do. So the thing that's technolo technologically closest to realization is probably socially furthest from realization. And of course, the paradox is that if you're talking about, if you go and look at the artificial trees option, this role is reversed. That technology is actually quite distant from being a reality. It's still largely conceptual. There are some experimental um, uh, plants that do this. Uh, you could do this under national planning laws. Uh, there's no international implications. It's basically carbon capture and storage, except instead of taking the carbon out of flue gas, you're taking it out of the ambient atmosphere. Not very controversial, uh, but technologically quite distant, distant. But with all of these, we are being told by, the, by people who cleave to the view that nature is fragile um, that even talking about these options creates a moral hazard. So we're getting the same argument now as we did have over the last 20 years about adaptation. We're getting that same argument about geoengineering. If you hold out to people the prospect that there is some kind of solution that doesn't involve cutting emissions, then they will be tempted to carry on cutting emissions. Actually, um, in some empirical work that I was recently involved in as a member of the British Royal Society's uh, working group on geoengineering, we found exactly the opposite. That when we interviewed people who were avowed climate change skeptics, they actually said if we saw firms and governments doing this kind of thing, uh, we would probably um, start to take it seriously. So that brings me to the end. I just want to say I th hope that I've convinced you, if you weren't already convinced, that climate politics is contested. It remains contested, very much because of different worldviews. That while science can't arbitrate values and tell us what to do, it does seem convincing to me at least that there's a problem on a scale that we've yet to fully grasp. We are practically locked in to a deeply flawed policy architecture of cap and trade. We need to shift our mitigation efforts from emission targets to technology supported by research, demonstration, and deployment. We need to make serious investments in climate adaptation. And we need to find, uh, fund a significant research program into some of these options uh, in order to uh, evaluate their potential role in dealing with the problem. How likely is any of this to happen? Well, I think it's highly unlikely uh, that given the sunk political costs that people have invested in Kyoto, it's highly unlikely that the Kyoto architecture will be thrown out at Copenhagen. Uh, 
Uh, in economics, the rational thing to do is to walk away from sunk costs. In politics, your sunk costs are your political capital. So I think that we will still see lip service paid to the Kyoto architecture. But I think that there are some signs of recognition uh, among people who are aware of its shortcomings uh, that technology and technological change, stimulated technological change, will actually be the key to changing course. Thank you. Shall I come here? You can sit here, please. Grazie, grazie, Professor Reiner. Io penso che dall'inizio di questo discorso fino alle conclusioni credo si siano affrontati argomenti molto interessanti. Il professor Reiner è partito facendo l'esempio di come a differenti latitudini noi affrontiamo e intendiamo il tema della natura. Per un americano la natura è qualcosa che è lontano dalla sua abitazione, per un europeo la natura è parte della sua abitazione. E in mezzo a queste differenze, alla fine, ha suggerito il fatto che di fronte ad un tema così globale serve una risposta globale. Ho imparato alcune, diciamo, non, intuitive, non intuitivi suggerimenti che vorrei portare alla, alla vostra attenzione anche per suscitare delle domande che possiamo rivolgere nei prossimi minuti al professor Reiner. Primo di questi ho sentito esprimere uno, un scetticismo molto forte sul fatto che i governi nazionali possano incidere su un tema di questo genere e questo è un grosso impedimento perché allo stato attuale le scelte politiche sono la somma di molte scelte nazionali. Non esiste un'organizzazione delle Nazioni Unite che fa una politica sul climate change. Il secondo aspetto è eh, veramente paradossale, si dice di investire nelle tecnologie che annullino il problema dei cambiamenti climatici, mentre il professor Reiner ci dice di investire in ciò che può, che ci rende più adatti ad affrontare un cambiamento ambientale che comunque ci sarà. E le diapositive che presentava sulle fonti energetiche per i prossimi vent'anni sono emblematiche, continua a esserci consumo di petrolio, continua a esserci consumo di gas, il nucleare, ha fatto bene a ricordare il professor Reiner, lui è partito, ha delle origini da antropologo, io ho delle origini da ingegnere nucleare, quindi sono molto sensibile a questi temi, ma inizialmente su sponde differenti, però ho visto che eh, nemmeno il nucleare nei prossimi anni riesce ad occupare una fetta importante dei consumi energetici. Quindi noi dovremo convivere con questo fenomeno ed è estremamente importante che nulla si dica e nulla si faccia in termini di investimenti per essere adatti a convivere. Noi sappiamo che una specie che ci ha preceduto molti milioni di anni fa per non, essere, per non essersi adattata è scomparsa, naturalmente noi non vogliamo fare la stessa fine, né vogliamo farla fare i nostri figli. Se ci sono delle domande dal pubblico sono benvenute e anche se sono molto provocatorie il professor Reiner, essendo un professore, è anche molto capace di rispondere a domande provocatorie. Prego. C'è un microfono per cortesia? Grazie. Può fare la domanda in italiano se vuole. Che cosa pensa della, eh, volevo sapere che cosa pensa il professor Reiner delle eh, tecnologie di eh, carbon sequestration e comunque di tutte quelle tecnologie che eh, tendono a ridurre anche gli inquinanti. E cosa? Ecco, in, eh, in, io penso che ci siano delle politiche... Eh, europee e una politica mondiale che tende in questo senso. Well, <coughs> carbon sequestration is part of the uh, technology of uh, air capture that I discussed at the very end.